Well, good morning, good afternoon, good night. Um, welcome to another interview. So for today, we are going to be talking with singer, songwriter, gamer, amazing person, super chill, um, Dory. Uh, so Dory and I, just a little bit of context, Dory and I met a couple years ago. Um, she was performing with uh, a cover band back in my hometown in Puerto Rico. And she is so nice. She's the nicest person ever. And she agreed to sit here, sit with me and just talk a little. So let's see how that goes. Let's wait it until she connects. She joins the conversation. Um, so hi, welcome. Thank you for your time. Thank you for inviting me. Introduce yourself. I said a little bit. I talked about how you're an amazing songwriter and singer and about your gaming and about how we met a couple years ago back in Puerto Rico um, with your cover band and yeah that that's it I think that's all I said <laughs> I mean I that's don't think much there's it. <laughs> anything left for me to say um, but I, I guess if you want me to uh, how would I introduce myself um, honestly I'm going to say that um, I'm a singer-songwriter. Um, I've been doing this for quite a lot of, a quite like long period of time. Um, I enjoy the process of writing music, the, the process of producing a show and just being there connecting through my lyrics and my music with people. Um, so if I could say I'm a very passionate singer-songwriter. That is. That would be a good description. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna post your um, social media on the on the video description. People can find you if they want to hear your music. Mm -hmm. Suggest they do because it's really good. So <laughs> thank so, you. So yeah, and let's get to it. So what we're doing here, I'm just gonna ask you a bunch of random questions and just answer the most honest way you can and. Also, the first thing that comes to your head is also the most of the time is the most sincere you can be. So don't be afraid to go a little weird because we're all weird here. <laughs> yeah, we are. Look at my background. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So first off, what do you have for breakfast today? First things first. Oh, my God. I actually had el mesón for breakfast. I actually woke up really late today and I had el, el mesón. <laughs> so yeah, a bocadillo with um, ham and cheese, uh, tomato. Yeah, that was my thing. I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> now for that, I am very jealous. <laughs> so oh, don't be, don't be, don't be. <laughs> if animals could talk, which one would be the most rudest animal of them all? Oh my god, the serpent. <laughs> I don't. I mean, First they will be they like, can't. I, I can't, I can't imagine it. Like, uh, I can't imagine the snake like crawl, like going slither into your way, into your towards you, and be like getting up and be like, "Don't talk to me," and just go away. Yeah, yeah, I can, <laughs> yeah, I can picture a snake being really bitchy. Oh yeah, they. <laughs> I mean, they are kind of like mysterious. So they, they technically already have a resting bitch face. So, yep, yep. Far is part of them. <laughs> Which fiction character scares you the most? Oh my god, it scares me the most. Uh, I. For me, I'm gonna give you an example. For me, okay. it was Freddy Krueger, because okay. when I was when I saw the the movies for the first time when I was little and I was so scared of being so helpless in my dreams because he attacks while you're asleep and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. I was so, so scared that I would be so, you know, I'm like laying in bed. There's not literally nothing I can do. And I, oh my God, it's, I had so much, so many nightmares. That's <laughs> a character that I can't deal with. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. I mean, I could see Freddy, but I also can say I've had a tough time watching the Chucky movies, uh, mm. mostly because 
um, I fantasize a lot, like in terms of like when I was a kid, I would like, let's say we had like a big tree on the back of the house. It was like a mango tree. And um, I would imagine the roots being the divisions between the rooms of a house. So, you know, I was always that kind of kid that could see a world out of nothing. And then seeing this toy uh, being so evil, it, yeah, it was tough for me to watch Chucky as a kid. Ugh, for everyone. <laughs> I, I, really, I, I really don't like those movies. I don't. I've seen them. But I don't enjoy them. I don't know why. I Correct. <laughs> I Correct. Like, I was seeing this movie that everyone's been talking about, um, The Platform. That Have you seen it on Netflix? I have not. I've heard of it. I have. So, yeah. Everybody's saying, like, it's, it's a great movie. I mean, it, it has its, its greatness, but I did not enjoy it. It was very... Uh, gore and nasty and i was like i can't i can't enjoy this i'm yeah. cringing the whole time there's sometimes you're watching a movie or a show and you're like i don't know why i'm watching this i don't yeah. like this mm -hmm. why am i watching this but you can't look away because you yeah. want to know what happens exactly yeah <laughs> uh, okay if if you were in a confrontation and if you were in a fight um, any of that sort, not, not necessarily the physical fight. What would be your fight song? Like that song that's playing on your background. For me, it would be Babe, uh, Barbie Girl by Aqua, but in a like more acoustic version. I can imagine, imagine that if you're being recorded for like a TV series, mm -hmm. I can imagine myself like, you know, the crying and the sweat and like being very angry and just having Barbie Girl, very dramatic, playing in the background, you know? What would be <laughs> fight song like that very dramatic song oh my god uh my fight song this is a tough question man <laughs> just See. imagine how dramatic it can be it can go either way imagine you like in slow motion just fighting for the dumbest stuff like arguing for the dumbest stuff <laughs> I mean, does it have to be funny? Because I took it to a serious no. level in my mind. No, no, no. It, it, don't, it, don't, it don't have to be. It don't have to be. Okay, so um, one of my favorite bands is Paramore. And you know this because we share that same taste. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's a lot of songs from them that I could say would be like on the background. But especially... Um, from, from the album Brand New Eyes. Um, I quite forgot the name of the song. Um, and I'm gonna cheat right now with my phone because I have it, it in my mind. Go for um, it, go for it. Um, Paramore. I didn't think. From it's, the, Paramore? it's from Brand New Eyes. That's a fantastic album, honestly. And I had it on the tip of my tongue right now. Oh, Feeling sorry. Ah. <laughs> that would be. Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> I got no time for feeling sorry, and that would be playing on the background, and I'll be like throwing punches all around. Yeah, with the guitar and like very <laughs> the yep. energy very up in there. Oh my yeah. god! Yes. Um. So, if you could tell old Dory, as in past Dory, something, if you could talk to your younger self when how old would you go back in time to talk to yourself and what would you say oh wow um i would travel back when i was around 12. i was it was about the time that i finally picked up the guitar like on a serious level um yeah like 10 12. and i remember being so frustrated like all the time because obviously when you're learning it at the beginning you want to be good you want to be the best you, you you take the guitar for the first time and you already want to be playing a song and i was that kind of person but obviously it was tough for me because i didn't went to school or anything i just simply my dad bought me this book and it had like a method of how to learn how to play the guitar and i used it because even though he plays the guitar he is um left-handed so it was kind of tough for me to like follow him 
So he bought that. And I remember so many, 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 many times to, I mean, dropping the guitar and just saying, like, forget about it. I don't want to do it anymore. Um, and that happened for a long period of time. So I would basically go back. And from the first moment that I dropped the guitar and I quit, <laughs> um, <laughs> I just want to go back and say, like, hey, don't do this because it just takes time. Um, and even though that drop in and picking it up, it's part of the process. I always say to myself, like, I wish I hadn't done that because I would be so much better right now, you know, because this, the process, the time that I've invested learning how to play the guitar and everything throughout the years, I would probably have, if I didn't quit that, that so many times, uh, probably had more experience right now. <laughs> I mean, but don't, don't, um, you don't, talk yourself down you're an amazing um guitar player like you're really good because i've seen you play live <laughs> thank you and, thank you and that's those are some serious skills that i know you invested a lot of time and even though you quit some every now and then back back then those times you got where you wanted to be i know you want to do more but yeah. you got there so That's the important part. The, the, the whole journey led you to where you are now. So that's important. Yeah, yeah. So what is the weirdest thing you have done on a date? On a date? Oh, dude. I've <laughs> done a lot of crazy things in my life. I could tell you like a bunch of weird stories. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the weirdest, okay. Uh, I think the weirdest would probably be <laughs> mm -hmm. wow I just I'm thinking like what can I share <laughs> <laughs> um, just keep in mind that anyone can see this you know <laughs> yeah yeah I'm like okay let me just um, okay so I mean you know how I mean, if you don't know it, people are going to notice right now. I'm a very goofy person. Um, that's my personal personality. That's who I am. I'm the kind of girl that when I'm in a relationship, I'll be like, baby, 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 baby good morning, kissy, kissy. I will be like that. <laughs> so um, I went on this date. I think it was back in 2013. No, 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 no way back. We're talking about 2009. Um, and it was actually, and I can say this because, you know, I don't really care. This was with my ex-boyfriend. Um, so he, he, he's, I think he still is a, a very romantic guy because he's not dead, but anyway. So he was very romantic with me. And on the first date, I remember that he brought a, a rose. And I, I was, I, I didn't know how to react because, you know, I thought it was a joke because usually you don't, you don't find people that do that. You know, people don't do that these days. He bought a rose <laughs> on a first day and I was like, I bluntly told him like, is this a joke? Oh my God. <laughs> is this a joke? And he looked at me and said like, no, this is for you. <laughs> and I felt so, you know, I felt so bad about it, like so bad that I ended up spending the whole night trying to make up for it. And I think I ruined it a little bit in, in the fact that I overdid everything. Like I tried to be like cool and I overdid myself. I mean, at the end it worked out because we ended up being boyfriend and girlfriend, but... <laughs> I mean, the first thing that I said was like, is, a joke? is this a joke? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Um, so would you rather go to space or to the bottom of the ocean? Space. And I'm, I don't know how to swim. So basically, <laughs> I don't want to go to the bottom of the ocean because I, I'm going to get scared that, you know, I'm going to drown or something. But now the moon the space just 
the opportunity to see the earth from another point of view, especially from up there. I think that's pretty, pretty powerful. Would you eat, what would you eat for your last meal? I just thought of Ted Bundy anyway. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> You know how, you know, they, they let them pick, like, their last meal and everything? I thought of Ted Bundy. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. What would I eat? It's my last meal ever. Ever. Is Honestly, I would have salmon <laughs> with... um. Uh, penne pasta uh, with olive oil and veggies. To be honest, that's like my favorite meal of all time. That sounds I, really good. I cook that all the freaking time. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is that song that makes the hairs on your neck and your back like crawl? That gives you goosebumps. What is that song? What is that song? Um... Dare You to Move by Switchfoot. I think that song uh, brings that effect on me. Um, and I'm going to say another one. It's um, Seria Facil by Luis Fonsi. And I think it's because both of the songs are beautiful songs. They're really powerful. But they bring me back to moments of my life where I felt down, sad, and um for some reason when i'm sad i listen to those you know to the to that kind of music um and it just brings me back like i start to remember the times that i um felt sad because something happened like something really bad something life changing um would you rather be bold or covered head to toe with hair bold Lampiño, baby. I would, I would love, like, I would do that. If I don't, if I don't have, I, I don't need to have hair in my body. It's okay. I can wear a wig and I can paint on my eyebrows. That's what I think. Because it's way easier. Shaving, oh, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mostly because I'm kind of lazy. But that's mm -hmm. a lot of work. That is a lot of work. Um, so what is the most valuable thing you own? Like sentimental value, it could be um, money, like money related. Like, what is the most valuable thing you own? To be honest, I've never been that type of person that like puts sentimental value into stuff. But I mean, to that level. But I guess there's. I have a guitar. It's an Epiphone. It's an electric guitar. I've had it for. Oof. I'm going to say uh, since forever. Um, I used to play with my old band, um, Polaris. And even before Polaris, when we were Moons Over August, um, I used to just play with that guitar. And when I moved to the States, to here to Orlando, I remember that I had a lot of stuff in Puerto Rico that I had to leave behind. We're talking about guitars, amplifiers, my everything, because I, I was living in my own apartment, you know, so I had everything. And I remember that for some reason I had to leave that guitar behind because I already had too many guitars with me <laughs> on the plane. Um, so I was... I was just, you know, so sad about it that um, I actually, I remember the day that I was gonna, like the final moving day, I took the guitar to my dad's house and I told him like, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna get this guitar. So take care of it. I don't, I don't have the guts to sell it. So just put it somewhere in my house and I'll be back and I'll get it. And I did actually like, <laughs> uh, like a month later, I went back just I mean, I visited my friends and family, but, you know, I, I got the guitar back. And I actually have it here. And it's really special. So I, I don't think I could sell that one. I could sell any other guitar, but not that one. 
If you could learn any language fluently, which one would it be? Ooh. I always wanted to learn how to sp like speak fluently um, Japanese. I actually, when I was in college, I took a uh, basic uh, Japanese class. Uh, and I wanted to do that because I remember back then I used to be so into anime and all that. But, so I wanted to learn Japanese. Uh, I, I, I still want to learn Japanese, honestly. And if it's not Japanese, I would love to learn French. I think it's a very romantic um, language. It is. For me, it's Portuguese. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe because of my work. It would be very handy to know Portuguese. Oh, yes. I, I feel you because I, you know, I work <laughs> yeah. at a theme park too. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I, for me, it would be Portuguese. But French, I don't know why. I would not want, I would like to understand what French, but I would not want to speak French. I don't know why I would, I would like to understand it so people can. Bon jour! So people can talk to me that would be like, <laughs> yeah. I know what you're saying, but I'm not gonna this. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, what is something that you have failed at, big or small in life? Um, there's a lot of things that I've failed at. Um, I mean, you're asking a musician that question. <laughs> uh, but let's not answer in terms of music. Um, things I failed. Wow. Um, I'm, you know, uh, I'm, I've always been an achiever. Like, I, I get things done. Um, I am very um passionate about starting something and and finishing it, that something um but what i think you know what i think i felt that back when i when i started college i didn't want to study music the reason why is um because I felt that, you know, music was on my veins and, you know, I was like, why, why am I going to pay for something that they're going to teach me music that I don't want to learn? You know, that was like my, my point of view back then. But now I think that I fell as a person or as a young teenager uh, making the decision because I don't regret what I studied. Like I, I mean, being an accountant for me, for it's, you know, it's gotten me out of a lot of things, you know, financially and economically it was, you know, it's been, it's been good. And I'm grateful for that. And I, and I don't hate it. I I've, I've enjoyed it, but I think I could have do both. I could have done both. I could have, you know, had my bachelor's in accounting and also, you know, study music or study music production because right now like all my free time what i'm doing is i'm producing music on my own like my my new album that hopefully i i thought i was gonna release it on this this summer but you know coronavirus <laughs> i can't do it uh but my new album i i did it here in my room i produced uh pre-produced all the songs and then i took them to the studio but the idea and the arrangements I did all by myself. And it took me so long to do it. We're talking about a whole year of, you know, producing seven songs. But it was mainly because I had to go to YouTube and learn on my own. And the process was just, it was tough. So yeah. if, if I would have studied that, like I knew that I wanted back on my head, but I didn't have like the courage. So I think that would be, the biggest failure the thought that that um mindset that i had of hey, i don't want to go and study music like they're gonna make me study music that i don't like you know that was so immature of me and you know even though it, it's been great i've done a lot of things in life and whatever but i think i failed um as a teenager <laughs> just making you know making that decision because i think i, I could have done it i could have 
you know, had my bachelor's and had, you know, my studies also in music production. Um, you were talking about doing all the pre-production for your album in your room. Talking mm -hmm. about rooms, let's talk about quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so for your, how did all of this is happening, all about the coronavirus, quarantine, how did this affect you, affect your job, your daily routine, um, the things you, you used to do, like, how did it affect you, you specifically? Well, um, a lot. Um, I went from being a normal eight to five or eight to four. Um, I was actually starting a new position at Universal because um, I used to work front of the house. I used to sell tickets and all that. And then um, in February, like the beginning of March, I got a new position. I was promoted and I finally, you know, uh, went into the finance uh, department and I was, you know, learning, learning while all of this was happening around the world. So I, I was trying to get used to a new routine and then suddenly I had to learn another new routine because, you know, they said you have to stay home. You, you cannot come to work anymore. So from waking up every single day at 6 a.m. to the first week, I slept like a baby. <laughs> like every single day, I would be in bed at still 9, 10 a.m. Um, and I would spend the whole day just watching Netflix and, you know, being very lazy. <laughs> and then, like, after the two weeks, spam, I started feeling like my body needed a routine. And it's weird because when you are working and you're on your daily routine, you hate it. You don't want to have a routine. But when you don't have a routine, I learned that I want it. <laughs> Yeah. I learned that I wanted I wanted to have something to do. So after two weeks, I started to like, like I'm gonna wake up at seven or eight a.m. I'm gonna make breakfast and then I'm gonna do this. You know, I started to make a plan so I wouldn't go crazy. Because honestly, you get crazy. <laughs> yeah, your body you can feel it in your body. Like you need to do something, even though you don't you necessarily go to work but you need to get up, get up and do something. Yes. It's, yes. It's a lot. And, and um, I, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. Even though I, I try to be a very positive person and influence in my, like, my surroundings, my roommates, my family. Like, I'm the kind of person that if something bad is happening, I try to, like, internalize what's happening first. I will fight it and I will be positive and, you know, and I'm not going to tell anyone that I am feeling horrible, but honestly, it came to a one day I called my dad and I started crying. I was, I was, I was like, dad, like, it's just difficult. You, you, you wake up to nothing to spend the day doing nothing. The uncertainty. To, yeah and then you start thinking when will this be over and then you have some sort of way like i mean i live with roommates so i'm always like a, with a little bit of paranoia because it's like i don't want to get infected i don't want anyone to get infected so you know i then started like cleaning like crazy like i remember that week that i let everything like broke down in my head i would get up have breakfast, and I would clean the house every single day like I was going to have a party the next day. You know how you clean your house because you're going to have people over? Yeah. I would do that every single day. Oh. <laughs> um, and, you know, it was crazy, and I called and I was like, it's just because it, it, it's, it's come to a point that you don't feel safe, not even, not even in your house, because, you know, this is a thing that you don't know if you brought it from somewhere. You don't, 
you can't see it. You, it, it's just so difficult to deal with. So that was actually like two weeks ago. Um, and then I bought Animal Crossing and life started <laughs> to get better. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> it took my mind off a lot of things. So Yeah, it, it helped a lot. I, I, well, you know, I played with you online. Um, mm -hmm. But it, they, I came to a point where right now I've been not playing as much because I was not sleeping anything. <laughs> oh my god i wanna i just got a new a new house so a new room in my house so let's figure that out let's see what i want to do with that oh my god i remembered i have to do this oh my god i want to make i want to make uh the flowers look pretty i want to make the uh make the hybrids grow i want to do this i want to do that i was like uh, i need a break the only thing that i play almost every night is Fortnite, and it's just because i play online directly like having a conversation with my other friends from home yeah just get in there to blow off some steam for like two three hours every night because they're, they're they have classes they're in college mm -hmm. so they have school so we just do it like for two three hours have a little fun we laugh a lot like <laughs> the weirdest things always pop up um <laughs> conversations but you need to find something to do you know yeah And I totally understand because when, when you wake up to nothing, it's like, so what do I do now? Yeah. And I, I was pumped that I, wa I said to myself, I'm going to write a lot of music, but I can't. Like my mind is just so, so heavy on all this stress and all this situation that I can't, like I can't write. And it's, I'm honestly, at the moment, I'm going to write this block. <laughs> um, so I'm, you know, I'm pretty positive that once I figure things out, um, I'm, I can write songs again. Uh, but for the moment, that's, um, honestly, I'm on a, I'm on a period that I'm obsessed with Animal Crossing. So that's all, all, all I do. <laughs> um, I go out, I like walk around the complex um but um i've been playing a lot of animal crossing to the <laughs> point that i wake up every morning and i say like i gotta water my plants so yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah I'm, oh, i'm obsessed um <laughs> but you know it's dude i've been like what 32 days or so it's it's been tough and i, I mean i'm grateful f uh for my partner for my roommates You know, because, you know, I don't feel entirely alone. But at the same time, you know, I do miss the social life. I do miss, and by social life, I mean going to work and seeing people and talking to people and just, you know, being away from my bed. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, having your bed right by your side every single day is like, should I, what should I do? You know? Mm -hmm. um, do I Actually, I wake up and I make the bed up every single day just so i don't go back on it that is smart i should do that i put yeah. my phone I <laughs> uh, <laughs> um but a lighter note what is the most hilarious childhood memory that you have most hilarious oh so remember when i told you that um i have a big imagination so i did you know I think it was right after I saw Titanic. For some reason, me, my cousin, and um, my sister, the tree that was our house became our Titanic. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I always remember the rooms, and we would like remake the whole movie, and because it was, it's, it's a big mango tree. So the roots, they're really like far off and, you know, yeah, I think that's the funniest thing. Us remaking the Titanic um, out of our imagination of a tree that into our heads, in our, you know, it was the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> um, who would win in a fight? Captain Planet or Jimmy Neutron? 
Oh my god. Why would Captain Planet fly Diminutra in the first place? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I really don't know. But, but if, um, they, if they were in a fight, who would win? I'm going to say Cap Captain Planet. I mean, because Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Neutron is powerful. He's smart and all that, but he's still a kid. And I think, you know, Captain Planet would find a way around that. If you had a superpower, any superpower, what superpower would it be? Teletransportation. Uh, why? <laughs> places <laughs> uh yes yes because you know i love to travel and the reason why i don't travel a lot it's because hey money tickets <laughs> so if i could just teleport myself to let's say hey i want to go right now to boom texas just just to say something random i don't know i don't know why i want to go to texas right now, <laughs> <laughs> no let's say something more you know more like uh, hey i want to go to australia and go and have fun with the koalas that's actually on my bucket list um <laughs> but um i would do it you know with just the snap of the finger and i would just go there and i don't have to like spend money on hotel rooms or anything because hey i can just snap my fingers again and sleep in my bedroom <laughs> <laughs> yeah i would always say go um traveling time but not to go forward but to go back no okay. you could fix uh, some things every here and then or here and there or relive something that's what i would do how far would you travel back if it's to fix something, it would not be far because okay. the further back you go, the trickle of like the domino effect will, it would be a completely different future. To relive things, oh, I would totally go back to uh, like when I was very, very little, if I could go in my own self, in my own self, I'll just relive my childhood. That's what <laughs> I would, Like I would relive like, Oh, that birthday party, or this family trip we took, or this day at home with my my um, brother and sister, and when this happened, it, those little things that now you look back and you're like, hmm, I would I would love to relive that. I never yeah. would say something like that, but I would I would like to be there, be a little kid again. Um, and talking about the past, if you could talk to any um figure from the past any figure and ask for advice who would it be and what would you ask or if you would have a conversation who would it be and what would you ask um i know this is gonna sound um maybe a little bit cliche no it's not cliche it's but it um i would go back to Probably the, I'm going to say like 2003, 2002. Um, it was, I, I just want to go back to a moment of in time where my mom is alive and I could actually talk to her about situations that I'm actually living or situations that I lived um, after she died. Um, people... People sometimes they don't realize the importance of having, you know, uh, your mother's advice and in, in, in certain situations of life. Like, uh, you know, the first time that I fell thoroughly in love and all that, you know, she was not, she, she wasn't alive. So I couldn't talk to her about a lot of things. And I guess I, I would go back because sometimes I find myself in the situation or certain situation for example and i just think inside of my head like i wish i could like i wish my mom would be here to tell me like what to do or to talk to me about this so yeah i guess that and to wrap things up a little well not a little to wrap things up <laughs> um 
what is that quote that you live by that is in your head that marked your life that, or the most recent that you remember? Um, it's not a quote, but it's, it's a whole song. But the title of it is just fantastic. Um, it's from Andrea Bocelli. Um, Andrea Bocelli, and it's called Vivo Per Lei, Vivo Por Ella. Um, just the way that music is described in that song, um, I live by that, you know? Um, and to the point that like my next tattoo is going to be that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And another one, um, I saw it in a Disney movie, actually. Um, I used to be like Hilary Duff, number one fan. And it's from a Cinderella story and is... It's just basically the basis of the line is fantastic. Is um, never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. And I think it's a great phrase. It's it's a great thing to have on your mind every time you're scared of failing. So I I try to everything I do, um, I do standing by those two by how passionate I am about things, not, not only music, and by not letting fear um, stop me from doing the things that I wanna do. We can't let fear stop us, otherwise we would, nothing, would get, nothing would get done. Yeah. That's, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. And Dory, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Camila, I have fun. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Thanks for saying yes to talk a little with me. No, always do. And I hope I get to hear your album very, very soon. I'm very excited for that. <laughs> Thank you. And hopefully everything will get back to normal pretty soon as well. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Well, Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye. Thank you for watching the video. If you want to be part of a conversation with me or you have any questions to ask me, don't hesitate to contact me on Instagram. And... Thanks for staying until the end of the video. Have a nice day. Have a good morning. Have a good night. Thanks for watching.